At the start of September in 2022, I packed up all my stuff. I got on a plane and I relocated from Denmark, which is where I was born and raised and where I lived for basically the first 24 years of my life to Dubai. So in today's video, because I'm about to hit my one year anniversary, basically of moving to Dubai, I thought I would make like a 12 month recap, just kind of breaking down what my thoughts are about Dubai, how I feel like it's been living here for the past year. You know, just kind of give you some insights, some pros and cons, and just my overall experience basically and also what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna draw some conclusions to Denmark because i was just back home on vacation for summer because it's freaking hot in dubai during summer so i'm just gonna draw some parallels basically to the west or to Denmark where i've been so you can kind of try and see the contrast between being in dubai and being in europe western europe the West in general, basically. But before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Rasmus. I'm the owner of Minix. That's a performance marketing agency where we specialize in helping growing e-commerce brands through UGC videos, paid advertising, and now also email marketing. Also, if you have any questions throughout watching this video or after watching the video, uh, just leave them down below. I read all comments on all videos and respond to all questions. So if there's anything you want to talk about, anything you want to discuss, anything you want clarified, just leave it down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. And if you end up enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe. That would massively help me out. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the people and the relationships that you're kind of building in Dubai, because it's very different from living in Denmark and living in Europe in general because of the weather, but also, you know, the types of people that move here. And in general, I feel like the, the friends and the relationships you build with people wherever you live dictates a big part of your overall experience of living in any given place, really. The relationships that you're building here are very fleeting, I would actually say, especially during summers. So because the summer here is just super, super hot, like it's literally unbearable, a lot of people will go back to, you know, where they grew up or they will go on vacation, usually to Europe or to US, you know, where really they're from. I went back to Denmark, I was a little bit in Spain, I was a little bit in Sweden, a little bit all over, really just to escape the heat basically because it is just unbearable like I'm someone who likes to work out a lot outside like my, I do calisthenics and that's like a body weight type of style workout I do tennis I run a lot and basically I ran outside right up until like end of May I would say I think it was like four weeks before I left and I uh, for Denmark and I left at I think the 20th of June so I had like three four weeks where it was literally just so hot that I couldn't stand running outside and now I just got back to Dubai last week I've tried running outside for the past four runs and I have to go indoors again like it's literally unbearable I can't even if I'm just going for like a normal jog, like I take my pace down tremendously and I still can't really catch my breath. Like my heart rate is just skyrocketing because my body can't get rid of all the heat that's building up because it's so hot and it's so humid, even if I'm out running at like 5.30 a.m. in the morning. And so that's just to give you like a little bit of comparison. So I get why people are leaving Dubai during summer and that's also the reason why I left because it's just not fun. Like Dubai is, is very, like there's two seasons really. There's summer, which is like June, July, August, maybe a little bit of like start of September where it's just really, really hot. And then really from there, it's pretty ple pleasant. Like I'll say December, Jan, Feb, like those are the best months. Cause then we have like 20, 25 degrees during the day. And that's perfect. Like that's literally the perfect temperature and, and everyone wants to kind of be here. But to, to bring it back to the relationships, you know, and the people that you meet here and the friends and the friend groups you build up, you know, a lot of the friend groups you will have will have some sort of WhatsApp channel. And one week they can literally just be going crazy. Like, hey, you know, people want to go out, people go to restaurants, want to go to the desert and whatever. And and then the next week, it's just completely dead because then people left. And so it can go from 100 to zero like real quick and then it can pick back up as people start coming back from vacation. And also in general, you know, depending on what sort of friends you have, if you have like very wealthy friends, they probably jet in and out of Dubai all the time. And that's sort of the whole idea behind Dubai. It's like a lot of people come here with some sort of end date or end goal. You know, they want to amass this, relocate, get some tax benefits for a couple of years. And then, you know, they want to move somewhere else or back home where they can be a little bit more financially stable. And that's just the whole premise of being in Dubai. So relationships are very fleeting, but on the contrary, I will actually say that the relationships you build here are also way more 
meaningful. Like I, I feel like there's more depth to them because the people I've met here has been the most welcoming, the most respectful, the most warm people ever. And it's so, so easy to make friends here. I've talked about this situation once on my channel before, I think, but like a couple months ago, I had someone literally in the elevator just approach me and be like, hey, you know, it seems like you came from the gym, you know, where do you work out? And then we talked a little, a little bit about that and we went out for coffee and then, you know, we became friends. And same thing I had in June, like literally, I think the week before I left, I had, I had a guy in the gym come up to me. I was doing like some handstand stuff in the gym and he came up to me and was just like, hey, that's super cool. You know, could you give me some tips? And then I gave him some tips and pointers to do like handstand pushups. And then he told me, hey, I'm actually a chef at the restaurant in the next building. Building, why don't you bring a couple of your friends and then I'll treat you to some lunch. I was like, that's amazing. I've never really experienced that before because it's not the social norm. Like it's not the etiquette basically in Denmark and what I'm used to. I'm not used to people just randomly coming up to me and start a conversation. And I think it's incredible, not only that it's happening here in Dubai, but also because it's such a big melting pot of different people from all over the world, different religions, different ethnicities, different political views and everything. But I don't know if it's because it's just so safe here that people feel more inclined to actually go up and start conversations with people. But I, I, I love that aspect of Dubai is that you can literally make friends everywhere and people are super open to actually talk to you and befriend you in some way. Like you don't have to become best friends with everyone, but you you can make a ton of connections here really, really easy. If you just go and live your day-to-day -day life, and then, you know, if you're at the gym, if you are if you play soccer, if you play tennis, whatever, like you can just easily make a bunch of friends and get to know a bunch of people in a really short period of time because people are just super open, they're super respectful as well, and super welcoming and helpful. So yeah, I've had, nothing but really good experiences with the people and making new connections here in Dubai, which is one thing I really, really appreciate about it. And it makes a big impact, you know? Like I used to live in Spain. I've lived in Spain three different times, two times in Marbella and one time right outside of Barcelona. And I'd say it's definitely not as easy to make new friends because the social dynamics in, in Europe, or at least in the places I've been and also in Denmark, it's just different. Like it's, it's just not common to actually go up and talk to people like that and just randomly start conversations, but it is here, which is something I really, really appreciate. To move on, the next thing I have on my list here is, and one thing I really appreciate about Dubai is that it's easy to curate your own reality. And what I mean by that is, Dubai is literally a place where you can live whatever life you really want. Like you wanna rent a villa for $100,000 a month, you can easily do that. You just go on propertyfinder.ae and find the most expensive villa on the palm and that will easily set you back 100K per month or more. But you also wanna live like a more normal life. Maybe you have a normal job and you wanna try and save up some money and just pay one grand for an apartment and actually a nice studio apartment. You can also do that. So you can live a super extravagant life and you can also live a super normal life and that exposure to different scenarios is one thing I really do appreciate about Dubai. Now, the caveat to that <laughs> and sort of the con is that you can also easily get sucked into this spending problem really where Dubai will just suck out all your money because there's so much stuff to do. Like there's so many Michelin restaurants, like five-star restaurants. You can go jet skiing, you can go to the desert. You wanna go to Burj Khalifa, you wanna go to Burj Al Arab, to Sal and spend, you know, five, ten thousand dollars on a lunch. You can also do that. So if you're not very careful, you can easily get into money problems because there's so much stuff to do. And if you don't have a little bit of discipline, with your money, it's very, very easy to get sucked into this experience economy that Dubai really is. Like it's built on tourism and they've really nailed that, which is also why when you do live here, you kind of have to separate a little bit the tourism aspect of Dubai with the day-to-day -day living, because that is very, very different. And I've had friends that came here and said, hey, I'm gonna be here for like three, four, five months. I just wanna work a little bit, like really just be in a good environment to, you know, be in a monk mode and, and grind with my business and, you know, be on the hustle and everything. But then they come here, they go on a jet ski once and they're like, oh shit, maybe tomorrow I should go on a beach club. And I had one friend that actually got into this. And one time we were having a gym session together. And at the end, right before I went home, we were just talking about work really, like how many hours we put in. And he was like, yeah, if he could get in like three, four hours of solid work a day, he thought that was an amazing day for him. 
Now, bear in mind, he's someone that used to just easily crank out eight to 10 hour days, right? And now because Dubai and this experience economy really just put him on a completely different path. Now he went down to like three, four hours and it wasn't even every day he would get in like three, four hours of work, mind you. So you just gotta be mindful of that. Like you can easily spend all your money in Dubai, but you can also easily save up a ton of money, especially if you're from Europe because the tax incentives are so good. The next thing here is culture. And really when I talk about culture and it's just because it came into my mind because I was, when I got home to Denmark, it was a real big shocker to me because it's not something I've been exposed to in a long time. It's all this like, wokeness and yeah maybe put a little trigger warning here it's not to offend any people this is just my personal beliefs i think that the whole wokeness culture we have going on in in increasingly in europe but especially in the us and i'm on social media you only get exposed to th stuff going on in the us i don't really like it i think it's a lot of noise and it's just not something i'm interested in and in dubai if you didn't know the whole lgbtq the whole wokeness like having 187 different genders is not a thing here like they don't have pride month they don't have anything of that it's much more you know just normal life and when i got home to them like literally the first thing i saw getting out of the airport was the rainbow flag and i just thought it was pretty odd like like why would you flag that why would you put that flag up why just not you know, let people do their stuff instead of being like in everyone's eyes. And also I was out with a friend, our new friend, basically a YouTube subscriber actually that DM'd me on Instagram. I was out with him for a coffee and we actually talked about this. And it's a common theme I've noticed with the, especially the like business people I know here, which is majority of my circle, is that not a lot of people actually subscribe to it. It's just, it's not that I have anything against it, to be honest. I just don't like it being pushed everywhere. I think if you wanna be in those circles, you know, and, and, and that's what you're into and you associate with the rainbow flag, that's fine. Just don't push it out to everyone. And it seems to be a common theme, at least from what I've noticed here, is that not a lot of people subscribe to. Like they just wanna live a normal life, they just don't wanna do their things. And then, you know, whatever you subscribe to, you can subscribe to that at home. But when you're out in public, you're just respectful and mindful of others. And the whole culture you have in the Middle East and basically what you have with Islam, right? Cause Dubai and the UAE is an Islamic country. I really like that. Cause it's just, I find it way more peaceful because you don't have to stress about, you know, stepping over anyone's toes. Like if you disagree with something, you generally have a like a very normal down to earth conversation and debate about it if you want to debate about it. Whereas what I feel in Denmark is that whenever you want to disagree with someone, you can't just have a normal chill debate with anyone. It always has to escalate into one person being this and the other person being that and you just start naming each other terrible things, which is not something I appreciate. And I really appreciate here in Dubai that you don't have that culture that you in the West. The last thing that I really feel like is a big pro and what I've really appreciated about living in Dubai is the vision they have for this country. So in Europe, in the US, like there's not a ton of vision for what do we want to achieve in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Like there's not a, a grand master plan for what are we trying to develop in this country like we have in the UAE and in Dubai especially. So to give you context, like in Dubai, there's literally always something new being built. There's something new being launched. You can go into any EMAR office, which is the state owned or Emirate owned real estate company. And they will have these like massive layouts of mini cities basically that they're trying to build. So right now they're trying to build the, I think it's the world's biggest casino or something. They're also still in the process of building the next world's tallest tower. And there's just always something new going on. Like they have a very clear vision for what they want to achieve yeah, economically, safety-wise, education-wise, health, health-wise for the country, which is not something that I see being done in Denmark and in Europe specifically. But sure, in Europe and in the US and the West in general, like you do have these different things that they're trying to go towards, but it's not as concrete as it is in Dubai. Like, okay, in Dubai, hey, we wanna build X amount of skyscrapers. You know, we wanna provide housing for X amount of people. We wanna make sure that we are top 10 in the world in education. We wanna make sure that we recycling 100% of our water and our water safety levels are as good as they can possibly be or like they are to this standard right so there's always something happening in dubai and because there's not this democracy basically it just makes the resistance levels much lower so they can actually get more stuff done and when you live in a society where everyone and even like the head honcho basically the 
guy, the ruler of Dubai, where they're very forward thinking and they're actually executing on stuff. That also does something to you where you get to Dubai and you actually also want to accomplish something, right? Because you are literally in a city where people are all about accomplishment. They want to accomplish something. They want to get better, right? Either financially, spiritually, physically, mentally. Everyone is in Dubai to be in a better position when they leave than they were when they got here. That's what Dubai basically is all about. And then it's about attracting tourists and giving you the opportunity basically to live the best life that you can, right? As I said, it's easy to curate your own reality. If you wanna live in a massive villa on the Palm for 100K per month, Dubai will give you that option. And it will also give you an option as a starter, let's call it like the starter level if you're not making a ton of money. They will also give you the ability to actually rent something that might not be as expensive so you can start your path towards growth. Now, one thing to keep in mind about Dubai and this whole, what they're trying to accomplish, right? So they are trying to show this image, right? And you need to conform within that image. So for example, Dubai labeled a very safe place, maybe not by mainstream media in the West, but it is a very safe place. And so if you do anything that is not safe, like you shouldn't come here and experience to get in a fight or if you're trying to bring drugs into the country like just don't do it that is one thing Dubai is very very big on is providing safety for all the citizens with something I truly appreciate so you know just don't try and do anything stupid basically don't steal don't try and take drugs don't drink on the streets be respectful to everyone and but if you're not if you're trying to taint the image that Dubai is trying to show you know you're also going to get punished for it very heavily and that's also why this place is so safe is because no one wants to end up in a jail in Dubai I don't know what it's like but I think think I've read and I could imagine at least that is not the most ideal standard you know if you're in a jail in Denmark it's basically a paid vacation you have like a TV you can get a PlayStation you have a nice bed and everything in Dubai I'm 100% I guarantee you you won't get a TV okay you'll probably get a floor and that's it maybe not even a pillow so yeah don't try and taint the image that Dubai is trying to portray of themselves because then you will get in big trouble. But I think that should be common sense to, to anyone really. So what are my overall thoughts? Just on an ending note here about Dubai. I think truly that Dubai is one of the best places on earth, even though I might not live here forever. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows what the future will bring. I will still think that Dubai is one of the best places on earth honestly it's safe there's amazing people great culture great restaurants it's just in general an, an amazing experience you can do and you can be whoever you want in dubai and i really really appreciate that coming from a country like denmark where if you're trying to be a little too different from everyone else, you are gonna get shamed by society. Now, with that being said though, it does take money to get the full effect of Dubai and to get the full experience, but depending on who you are as a person, that might be discouraging or it might motivate you. And for me, it just motivates me. It makes me want to achieve more with my life so I can actually get the full experience of living and visiting and being in Dubai. And honestly, on a long time horizon, I don't see anyone really competing with it. I think the Middle East in general has a lot going for it and they do have a very, very clear vision of what they're trying to become. They're trying to become the best place in the world for anyone to live and thrive, both economically, but also just quality of life. And I do think they can keep that promise. I do think over the next 20, 30 years, you're gonna see the Middle East become increasingly more popular, not just Dubai, but also places like Abu Dhabi, places like Saudi Arabia. I do think the Middle East in general has a lot going for it. And if they can execute on their vision of becoming the best place, uh, the best region in the world, I really don't see Europe being able to compete with it. I don't see the US being able to compete with it. Maybe you, the US can't compete with the Middle East if they fix what's going on in the governments right now, but I'm not gonna get too much into politics. But yeah, on a long time frame, I think Dubai has a lot going for it. And I do think it will become one of the most well-known places to live in the world if you want to live the best life possible. Now, that pretty much sums up today's video. I hope you found a lot of value in it. If you have any questions, as I said, make sure to leave your comments down below. I would love to answer. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to your channel. That would massively help me out. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.